In this video, I'll show you how to make proportional symbol maps in Illustrator using an export from ArcMap and from Scratch. So here we have an export from ArcMap that has proportional symbols representing points for countries where students study abroad from Middlebury, and also lines to represent those same proportions but extending from Middlebury to those countries. So let's start with the points. I'm going to turn off the line layer. And what I just want to demonstrate here is that with your export from ArcMap, you can change the graphic appearance of these points. Uh, and especially you can make each of them transparent so that you can see them layered on top of each other and also see the countries beneath. So if we come into the country points layer here, we've got a group as normal. I'm just going to throw out the clipping mask and ungroup like I usually do when I get an export from ArcMap. So now I've just got all these paths that are individual circles. And if I was to select the whole country points layer and change the transparency, it would change the transparency for the whole layer just like it did in ArcMap. And that's not what I want because you still can't see the overlap of these individual symbols. So what I want to do is select each of these paths individually and the best way to do that is to select one of those paths and then come up to select and select same and say select same fill color. And that will select all of the paths. You can see that the double circle is around the paths rather than around the layer and that selection knob. And now when we change the opacity, it'll change the opacity for all of those objects individually. And you can see if we zoom in here on Europe, you can see how those overlap on top of each other. I can also change the fill and the stroke of these. So say I wanted it to be a different color. I could make it red and that would change those all at once now that I've got them selected. And I can change the stroke as well, make that white. And now we've got these nice proportional symbols showing the number of students that have traveled to each country. And in Europe, where we have a lot of students, there's a very dense population of students, we can tell right away that that's very dense by the number of overlapping circles that there are. And we can also pretty easily distinguish which circle goes with which country. So we can see this circle right here goes with the United Kingdom, this with Ireland, this with, this with Spain, this with Spain, etc. You can also make your own proportional points just by drawing a circle and then scaling other circles relative to that circle. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to close this country points layer and turn it off and just make a new sublayer. We'll call that points by hand. So the first thing we want to do here is make a circle. And you could actually use any shape, but I'm just going to use a circle because it's the most common. And just to simplify things, I'm only going to make one circle for each continent. So I'm going to make this circle relatively large, and I know that Europe has the most students going to it, so I'll size this symbol so that it covers up most of Europe. So there we go. So the next thing we want to do is aggregate our data. And to help do that, I've made this Excel table where I've brought a table in that has the country names and then the number of students that have gone to each of those countries. And then I've aggregated this information by continent. And I've included the Middle East as a continent just because it's an area that the school advertises that you can go to. And then I've set up a formula so that if I specify the diameter of what I know is going to be the largest circle, which is the European one, it'll tell me the diameter of all of the other circles for the different continents. And if I change that diameter, let's say I change it to 100, it will automatically tell me the diameter for those other circles. It'll also tell me their corresponding areas. So I'm going to use this aggregation and this formula that I've made to specify the diameter to make a number of other circles for different continents on this map and then scale them using the diameter figure that I calculated. So I'm going to take this circle and copy using control C and paste control V to get another circle and let's just make this one for North America. So this is a 100% size circle. If I use the scale tool and double click on it, then I can change the size of the circle uniformly to a certain percentage of its existing size. So North America should be 27.65% of the 100% circle according to my table. So I'm going to type 27.65. And now it scaled the circle so the diameter is 27.65% the size of the diameter of this circle. And I should note that in this table here, I've set it up so that the ratio of the areas is equivalent to the number of students, the areas for those circles, and therefore the diameter is a geometric function of these area relationships. So these aren't linear proportions here compared to the proportions of number of students, but a geometric proportion. So now I can do the same thing for these other continents. I'm going to select Europe again and copy it, bring it down to South America, and scale it, in this case, to 51.6%. So there's my symbol for South America. I'll copy and paste Europe again. For Africa, the proportion is 28.85%. So there's a smaller circle for Africa. I'll paste Europe again. For Asia, the proportion is 53.44%. And then for Oceania, the proportion is 33.07%. 
I can also make a proportional symbol map using lines in Illustrator. And one way to start this might be to take the lines that have exported from Arc, and I'm just going to make sure to get these out of the group and out from under the clipping mask. Now you could select each one and then you know move it around or maybe put a curve on it or maybe try to aggregate them into lines that branch off from one another in order to show cumulative flows to each continent. I'm going to suggest actually that because ArcMap does such a poor job organizing the lines on this page and you'd really have to do a lot of manual work in order to break them apart and make this map visually appealing not to mention easy to understand, that you might actually want to go back and just reproduce all the lines by hand and use that as an opportunity to do some aggregation that will make the map easier to read. So as an example, I've made this map here that shows the same information where I've aggregated by continent rather than by country. So you can see that 52% goes to Europe and 15% to Asia. And while I used the information that I got from ArcMap uh, and then aggregated in this table over here, I put this entire map together by hand and just changed the size of the stroke based on the ratios that I calculated in the table. So how I might do that, let's come back over here, and I'm just going to turn off these country lines uh, because they're just a bit overwhelming and I don't really want to deal with editing them. I'd rather just start from the beginning by myself. I'm going to grab the pen tool and make myself a new folder. I'll call that lines by hand. And then with that pen tool, I can just draw lines the way I normally would. Let's draw a line over here to Europe. And I'm sort of going with this modern theme of using straight and orthogonal lines, but you could use curved lines if you'd like. And on my table here, I've calculated that with a certain line width going to Europe, these are going to be the other line widths that I should use to go to the other continents. So say that I made my line width going to Europe 40, that will automatically update my table uh, with these other line widths. So I can make sure that I've got that stroke selected with the selection tool, and then come over and just change that stroke weight so that it's 40 points. And then I can do the same thing for the other continents. I can just draw a line down to South America, and then according to my table, South America should have a stroke width of 10.56. And then for Africa, I should have a stroke width of 3.33. And you get the idea. You can pretty easily construct a proportional symbol map using lines just right in Illustrator by changing the width of the strokes. And that way you get a lot more control over where these lines are running. And it's a lot easier to make sure that the map is, is readable, the lines are separated well, and you have full control over things like the color right from the start.